Hello, this is Ramirez with Tidewater Renaissance Fighting Arts. Uh, today I have something a little different. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how you arm your kit. Um, this is, for the most part, I actually forgot to put on my uh, legs. And obviously I'm not wearing my mask right now. But I wanted to talk a little bit about how you choose to arm yourself. Specifically, one of the reasons I've been so busy is we're getting ready and training for the King's Cup tournament in Washington, D.C. And we have a lot of students that want to train up on longsword, so we've just been terribly, terribly busy. But this is um, one of my lighter jackets. It's actually the one I bought originally just to do rapier in, but I will you know, be using it for longsword because mobility is important. And when you have different jackets and stuff, some of my, my really heavy longsword jacket, which you may have seen me in some of my videos, it's a big black and gold jacket. It has lots of extra uh, protection on it. It's good for sparring, but sometimes mobility becomes an issue. And what I like about this jacket is it's very mobile because it's not as heavily padded, but it does have important padding features. This, for the record, is one by Superior Fencing. I believe it's their officer's jacket. And one of the things is in the shoulders, it actually, like the pants, it has a uh, foam pad in here. So while the jacket isn't as padded, it has specific pads to protect specific areas. I don't worry, there are pads for the elbow, but since I have a hard elbow, I don't worry about that as much. I've also put the shortened Purple Heart Armory uh, wrist guards on here. Now, this is a change. This jacket does come with plates, the elbow plate, but I traded it for the Spez and connected it so that I would have that forearm protection because this is a lighter jacket. Modifying your jackets or modifying your armor needs for things like tournaments or different weapons forms is important. Um, I have the shorter version because if you ever meet me in real life or at the King's Cup tournament, you'll know I'm not a very tall person. I have the shorter arm guards because they allow me to utilize my wrist and my elbow with my gloves. If I had the longer ones, they would cut into the wrist. So knowing, if, especially if you're a shorter person, that you have options, you don't have to go with the stock stuff sometimes. They make stuff for shorter people or shorter armed people. And you really should take advantage of that because that's going to give you that mobility. If you feel like your jacket's light, having arm protectors may be an answer. When I'm wearing my other jacket, sometimes I won't wear the, the hard uh, forearm protectors because it's so heavily padded. So that's something they that should definitely kind of keep in mind. Will it protect you? Now, I did mention I'm not wearing anything on my shins. Normally, I would have the Spez shin protectors on there. I just forgot in the case of this video. You might also say, Ramirez, what about your knees? Well... I actually have a hard cop in these pants. One of the things I do like about um, the superior fencing pants and this jacket is it has pockets where you put extra foam padding, or in that case, hard padding, to help protect you. And I'm just showing you my kit so you could kind of get some ideas. Uh, Spez generally doesn't have the inserts. I think some of them do, some of them don't. A lot of them have the exterior plates. If you need it, you know, there's usually we don't have a whole lot that protects the upper arm. I know that there are some groups making plastic armor up there. I think Spez has some. But it's not as often a target. I always like to make sure my hands and my forearms well protected. Uh, legs, you know, moderately protected, but certainly a shin hit is no fun, so we want to make sure that's protected. But you really should decide on what your own protective needs are and that whatever you're using, you're mobile in. So it's very easy for me to move. I have lots of flexibility in the legs so that I can move around. I can twist my body. I can put my arms up and not be inconvenienced. This gorget, which I just did a video on, one of the nice things about it being outside is I can move my neck and I don't feel choked. Uh, I would say that that's one of the biggest concerns I've had with a lot of gorgets I've owned 
And for me personally, I have a very big neck. For those of you into shirt sizes, I'm like an 18 and a half, 19 inch neck. And um, finding something that isn't gonna choke me out has been a problem, so ultimately I got this one. Very, very pleased with it. Uh, but find something that fits you. If you're uncomfortable, if you're fighting your armor or your equipment, you're gonna have a tough time. So make sure, especially if you're really serious, if you're doing tournaments, that whatever you choose as your arms and armor, A, that it protects you, that it's fitting over the right place. Like this knee cop, if it was a little lower, it would be a problem. If it was too high, it needs to protect right in that knee spot. So originally I was wearing these outside and it kept drifting down. So I ended up putting them inside in the pocket where the pad would normally go. Find armor that fits your requirements. So. Once again, this is Ramirez with Tidewater Renaissance Fighting Arts. We're located in Norfolk, Virginia. And if you'd like to find out more about us, I'll put a link in the description. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next video.